cyclonic. Ooh. A two-ton tornado. <laughs> Very own Miss Tessie O'Shea. Tessie from Tennessee. Tessie O'Shea became two ton Tessie from Tennessee. She wasn't two ton. She wasn't from Tennessee at all. She was our big star, wasn't she? You know, Tess was the one that was away in America or away in London in a big show, like we all would have loved to have been. And when she came to town, you know, we knew all about it. A superstar of popular entertainment for most of the 20th century, rich, famous, nominated for an Oscar, but now largely forgotten, the amazing story of the larger-than-life girl from Cardiff, two-ton Tessie O'Shea. <laughs> Two-ton Tessie was born Teresa O'Shea in Riverside, Cardiff in 1913. She was one of five children in a comfortably off family. Her father was a newspaper wholesaler who often got tickets to the local theatres where Tess would see all the great music hall acts of the day. By the age of seven, she was well and truly bitten by the performing bug. Tessie would have been born at the time when music hall was being changed into something that was more acceptable to the general public called variety. Music hall belonged to the, um, the pub, so it was always related to a pub, a music hall, whereas Oswald Stoll and the Moss Empires were treating these performers as theatre and therefore more respectable. <laughs> As a young child convalescing in Western Supermare after a serious illness, Tessie found herself on the beach one day next to the Piero Troop tent. The group of travelling musical performers were in the middle of a show when Tessie went to investigate, without telling her mother. I heard the music and I crept underneath the tent. One of the men saw me and said, Oh, hello, little girl, do you want to come up? And I said, Yes. You see, now in the meantime, though, my mother has gone mad because I've disappeared and she's got a policeman. And they're up and down the sand screaming and yelling when all of a sudden my mother said, hold it, that's my Tessie's voice. And she came in with the policeman into the tent and I was up on the stage singing a song that my dad taught me called A Neg and a Nam and an Onion A Neg and a Nam and an Onion Oh, what a sight to see spread on a plate with a nice cup of tea and egg and, and so it went on. When they saw that, they couldn't keep me quiet after that once I smelt the stage, you know. So Mama sent me to, naturally, to learn dancing. Dear little Vera Pike, bless her, taught me how to tap dance. And then they discovered I got a big voice as a child and by the time I was six and seven, I was becoming the wonder of Wales, you see, of course. When I was six, I started in vaudeville, I really did. And the first song my mum gave me to sing was a comedy number with a hat on my head and I said, there you are then, oh, there you are then, oh, there you are then, oh, there you are every day as you're on your way. You must be in the fashion and you've got to say. The young Tessie not only had a big voice, she was a big girl too, and appeared much older than her years. During one performance at the Bristol Hippodrome, a school inspector didn't recognize her. He saw the first show and he went to the manager. He said, your juvenile didn't turn up then. And the manager said, oh, yes. He said, well, I just seen the show. I ain't seen no juvenile. He said, the third act, that was her. He says, come on, she must be at least 30, that one. And that is how I said, yeah, it's true. Because I was out there singing, Friday is my day. My day out, I've got on me gloves and I've got on me fur, you know, one of those things. Nobody loves a fairy when she's 40. It was 1919, and at the age of six, Tessie was already on the bill. Her mother, looking for something to build the act around, seized upon her size. The comics always had their own material, right. so Mama had all the songs made, and she said, well, we'll have to start... Um, uh, having songs written about uh, being fat, and that's how it all started, that most of my first uh, songs I ever sang 
came about her being my size. My favourite song was I Wish I Was Thinner, I Wish I Was Thinner, A Little Less Outer, A Little More Inner. You can laugh, but it fairly makes me grunt when people, they mistake me for a baby elephant. I've had a massage, a sausage, a gallop down the passage, still I'd like a barrel or a bin. To get me figured down a bit, I run and show me slickness. When I measure up again, it fills me full of sickness. I'm too broad across the narrow and too wide across the thickness. Oh, mother, I wish I was saying, oh, I wish I was saying, I wish I was saying, I just let out a little more in her. Early in her career, Tessie was influenced by female music hall acts who were at least twice her age. I adored a woman by the name of Lily Morris mm -hmm. when she used to sing, Don't have any more, Mrs. Moore. Mrs. Moore, please don't have any more. Do you remember? Mrs. Moore, Mrs. Moore, please don't have any more. The more you have, the more you won't say, say, and enough is as good as a piece. Tessie, I think, had been inspired by Lily Morris's um, um, ability to use a stage, to move about. She moved about a great deal. <laughs> Numbers like Why Am I Always the Bridesmaid and the dance that she went into where she picked up the bridesmaid's dress and showed these football boots underneath. <laughs> In the mid-1920s, Tessie was spotted by a booking agent for Oswald Stoll, the king of variety theatre. On her 12th birthday, she turned professional and took her act around the Stoll variety circuit, singing very adult songs like this. When a boy falls in love with a girl as fat as me, he'll certainly have something on his plate. As he gazes at me figure, I can hear him softly snigger. I don't know what I'm gonna do if she gets any bigger. On the day that we're wed, he will blush a rosy red when the parson turns to him and says with glee, will you take for your wedded wife what's hidden by this veil? He'll take... <laughs> He'll take one look at me and murmur with a tiny wail. I'll take what I can carry, you can send the rest by rail when a boy falls in love. <laughs> Tessie's mother thought the American vaudeville star Sophie Tucker would be a suitable role model for her daughter, a big woman who knew how to put over a song. Some of these days, you miss me, honey. Some of these days, you'll be so lonely. You'll miss my hug. You're gonna miss my kiss. You're gonna miss me, honey, when I'm far away. I was 15 and she came to London. It was my mother. What a brilliant mother I had, let's face it. She said to me, Tessie, I'm going to take you up to London because somebody has arrived I want you to see. She'll be a very big influence, you know. She's a very big star. And I went and I saw. Of course, I couldn't believe it. And uh, I met her. And you know, she became like my mentor. She helped me so much. Some of these are dead. Some of these days, you're gonna miss me, honey. Some of these days, you're gonna be so lonely. You'll miss my honey. You'll miss my kiss. You're gonna miss me, honey. Well, I'm far away. As she developed, one of the things Tessie lost was her accent. In those days, it was seen as a hindrance rather than an advantage. Only one other Welsh act regularly worked outside of Wales, Ted and May Hopkins. Well, they were a double act, a Welsh double act. They used to sing, they used to do a few gags together, and uh, they didn't play an instrument or anything like that, but they were looked upon as being the premier Welsh double act of their day. Jenkins jumped up, he said, well, if you're having a roof to the town hall, what about a chandelier to hang in the middle of it? Davis jumped up, he said, what are you talking about a chandelier? There's nobody here can play it. Wales was supposed to provide actors, dramatists and singers. It didn't have a reputation for humour. And Ted and May Hopkin were the only act, comedy act, that made any impact at all outside Wales. No longer the Welsh wonder girl, but with an act that could travel, Tessie did just that. By the time she was 18, she toured and broadcast in South Africa. In 1932, she wrote to the BBC for an audition. By now, she had another string to her bow, the banjo. 
My mother loved banjo. So the first thing I ever did was to learn how to play, uh, you know, fingering. And I was playing Ain't She Sweet, and this is how I did it, okay? Right. Everyone who played you and guitar just had a, a special place for Tessie O'Shea. She had that wonderful right hand, the one that gave the rhythm. The left hand is the one that does all the business, but the right hand is the one that makes it come alive. And she had a right hand to die for if you're a ukulele player. Her big break came in 1934 when she was offered a prestigious 20-week summer season on the North Pier in Blackpool. She was 21 and looking for a theme tune for her act. The one she chose would take her even further away from her Welsh roots. And also a song that you've all taken my nickname from. I wonder if you remember it like this, eh? To Tan Tessie from Tennessee All six fellas upon the thing Just to keep in trim, they call it two tantes. Two tantes, the Romanchville, Tennessee, yes, they call Blackpool was the mecca of summer entertainment, and there were more light entertainment shows in Blackpool than there were in the West End of London. It was home for Tessie for season after season because Blackpool was the place to be. Hey, I was there for about 15 years consecutive. They used to say, let's go to Tessie O'Shea and see Blackpool. <laughs> it was lovely. Now known as Two Tan Tessie, she went into a touring review show which transferred to the London Palladium and for the next five years topped bills throughout Britain. As a performer, she was unique in style as well as stature. You can all see me. This isn't in your way, is it, loves? <laughs> Other glamorous ladies of the um, 30s particularly, whereas they were very slim and slender, <clears throat> Tessie was more buxom, um, fuller in figure, and she capitalised on it. Instead of trying to hide it, she exaggerated it so that she could use that bill matter to turn Tessie from Tennessee. There's no one, look, I got trousers on, look, 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 look. Can you see it? I take no chances. She was a musical comedy act, and to complement her witty songs, she developed a patter around her size and attraction to the opposite sex. That bit there, I was, uh, oh. Oh, I got the new shoes on. The comic has to create uh, an atmosphere when he goes on a stage. If you say, I'm going to sing a little song I, w I wrote while waiting for a laugh in Wigan, and uh, a little song entitled Get Down Off the Gas Stove, Granny, You're Too Old to Ride the Range, or whatever it is. So then you give a load of these things until you suddenly get a laugh, and you create a niche for yourself, and you go through that then into your act. Well, yeah, I was up there and I took one look and I said, that's it. <laughs> I said, that's just my size. <laughs> oh, Charlie, you're a fella. You're a lovely little guy. I'm really wild about you, and I just can't tell you why. But there must be some good reason making me feel this way. Cause every time I look at you, I want to stand and say, men like you, make women like me, go crazy over men like you. she wasn't a joke merchant 
she was a happy performer who had an amazing ability to embrace an audience with her smile and cheerfulness. No, I think I'm going for crap. Don't worry, it won't come off, love. It's all mine. Everything you see in front of you is mine. Bit of spit. By 1940, Tessie was recording and appearing regularly on the radio. She found time to get married, though, to David Rollo, a teacher from Cardiff. But the marriage was dissolved after 10 years. She never referred to it publicly again. Her career was her life, and during the war, as well as entertaining the troops with Ensa, she was at the Palladium, topping the bill with legendary comedian Max Miller. By the middle of the war, Tessie was earning £3,000 a week and her agent considered her the greatest female attraction in the country. She received a thousand fan letters every week and made history as the first woman to play the Palladium for a year. <laughs> Tessie often returned to Cardiff as the guest star on a popular new radio series, Welsh Rarebit. Finally, the Welsh accent had been accepted in entertainment, with the show attracting over 10 million listeners a week. That was the programme that for the first time projected to the rest of Britain the fact that the Welsh could laugh, and not only could laugh, but could laugh at themselves. If you wanted a typical Welsh joke, in my mind, you have Di and Bill. Di says to Bill, hey Di, he said, Bill, he said, do you know the difference between a collision and an explosion? And Bill says, no, I don't know the difference. And Di says, well, in a collision, there they are. But now in an explosion, where are they? I was one of a, a group, uh, a sketch that appeared every week, called the Tommy Trouble Gang. There was Ian and Evans, who was Willie. Hello, boys. That was his voice. And Tom. Tom Jones, you to talk like that the other way. So you had the different, you had the comedy in as much as, hello, boys. Hello, Willie. You had that sort of thing. And it was very straightforward Welsh comedy. Each week there would be um, variety performers in this, and Tessie appeared frequently with names like Maudie Edwards, Stan Stennett. I used to do a little parody about ghost riders in the sky. And one of the lines was, um, uh, and as he went a ride in past Tonna Pandy Jail, he found that Mrs Archer had run off with Dr Dale. And riding on through Ammonford, he found he'd been forsook because poor old Donald Piers had fallen in his babbling brook because that was his song. Donald Piers was like the Welsh Sinatra. Harry Seacombe, of course, Gladys Morgan. And it's just before you came on, I had yeah. a telegram. Oh, it's all right, see, it's from my young man. Yes, you can read it. Oh, no, no, really. Yes, it's all right, we're all friends by year, aren't we? <laughs> well, uh, there's nothing on it. It's, oh, I know that, we're not speaking. Yeah. <laughs> The success of Welsh Rabbit was the pace with which that show was presented. It was so fast, there was no waste of time at all. No hands. It created, uh, uh, I think, an appetite for Welsh comedy. Variety was changing in the late 1950s and 60s as the public embraced the new world of television. Many of the acts couldn't adapt, but two-ton Tessie was a survivor. Variety's greatest years were probably the same as the greatest years of radio. Beginning in the 20s, and then it began to fade in the 60s as radio was losing its dominance because of television. Tessie was bridging that gap by becoming more a musical performer rather than a, a musical entertainer. But there are a lot of songs that perhaps you didn't realize that I introduced to the world. Tessie was becoming more of a singer than a comedian. She toured with Billy Cotton's band, and although largely forgotten now, she was behind some of the hit songs of the decade. I don't 
like to get you on a slow boat to China. You remember it? All to myself alone. I'm a little on the lonely. I'm just a little on the lonely side. I keep thinking of you only. And wishing you were by my side, oh. I forgot a lovely bunch of coconut. And they we are standing in a row. A big one, some more one, some the big character. You give them a flick, the dress of the rich. Although still working, Tessie's career had reached a plateau until 1963, when she got the break that would change her life and career forever. Noel Coward had written a part for her in his new musical, The Girl Who Came to Supper. At the age of 51, Two Ton Tessie made her Broadway debut. It was fantastic. He wrote five real Cockney songs. And I came on as Ada Cockle with me fish and chips and did a whole routine with all the boys and the girls and the thing. And I went Saturday night at the Rose and Cran is just the place to be, you know. And I waltzed around that stage, because you know I'm a dancer too, love. And there was that American audience took one look at this big fat girl and said, my God, <laughs> what is it? <laughs> she made a huge success singing Cockney songs. A fair indication of Tessie O'Shea's versatility and ability to adapt. Or maybe it's because I'm a Londoner. I love London so. Oh, they love it. <laughs> In America, she would have been ideal. Her attitude to everything was typical American. She looked great because she was blonde. She was a bosom, she was bosomy blonde. Um, and she was always full of fun. So, you know, from the American point of view, she was heaven sent. Tessie didn't look back. From then on, America was her base. She was nominated for an Oscar and an Emmy and won a Tony. When she returned to Britain to work, it was as an international star, in demand in the ever-changing world of television entertainment. I think it's the advent of ITV in 1955 that really kickstarts this kind of thing, that really pulls in um, uh, acts from, from the stage onto television and gives them a mass audience for the first time. So you have, for example, Sunday Night at the London Palladium. What happens then after the advent of ITV, of course, in the 60s, is that the BBC has to respond because they were losing a, a large section of the audience. And so the BBC introduces variety programmes, I mean, by the end of the 60s, the good, the good old days, uh, which lasted for, for around 30 years, I think. And you can see how Tessie Shea adapted, for example, from one format to the other, how she reinvented herself. Uh, this keen awareness of what the audience wanted, what the medium wanted as well. Ah, hey, Mayor, I got a song to sing. A song that comes right from my heart. Hey, Mayor, I got a song to sing. It's so long since we've been apart. I'm gonna sing about... Millions of people tuned in to watch the good old days, and Tessie was once again topping the bill. She was now more famous than ever. In 1978, Tessie returned to her roots on the eve of the Cardiff Eisteddfod. At the age of 65, she was not about to retire. Her one-woman show charted the six decades of her life on stage. Hey, hello, good people. How do you do? It's lovely to be home again to sing to you, my darlings. Please don't ask me what the songs will be. I like a bit of everything. Well, you know me. She was radiant with delight because she was back in her old métier. She was loving it and uh, she was also, of course, tremendously warmly welcomed back. You know why I'm having more fun since I'm 60 than I had all the rest of my life? Oh, yes, I know. You can let the birthdays come and go. They won't leave me feeling glum. You know that the more candles I have on my birthday cake, the hotter I become. She was looking back on what had been, and, the and it confirms the, the theory that I have. There is a future in nostalgia, because the past is safe. We're never very sure about the future, 
but the past is safe and we can relax into it. And she was in her element then, being able to relax in um, nostalgia. Richard Burton. Ah. Oh, I thought I'd have had a chance when he got rid of her, but there we are, never mind. <laughs> Richard Burton, Dylan Thomas, Emlyn Williams, Tom Jones. Uh, Harry Seacher. For one night only, she was the wonder of Wales again. And if we were all together here now, we'd say to you, a roof, ready, I brought you, come on, go I was telling them, I don't know what it means. I read it on the back of a sauce bottle once. <laughs> Do you remember Daddy's sauce? I, it always said, a roof ready, I brought you, I come my God. So you see, love, if I come up to you and say, a roof ready, I brought you, I come my God, it means I've tried it and I like it. So now you'll know. There you go. For Tessie O'Shea, nothing compared to being on stage. It was her life. Theatre was her marriage. She had... Um, an early marriage that didn't last. Um, but her, her great love were, was the audience. Nobody loves a fat girl, but boy, how a fat girl can love. Nobody seems to want me. I'm just a truck on that freight train of love. I'm all alone on account of my fall. While he shouts for me, it's dying to keep someone warm. As a performer, she was bubbling, she was always ready for a laugh, she was always ready to give her all, you know, and she worked herself from, from the time the lights came on. It's like the old joke about, you know, I'm a ham, really. If I open the fridge, I'll do 10 minutes because the light comes on. And I think that Tess would be the same sort of person, you know. She would always want to be pleasing. She was always on stage, in other words. She can fail, but she don't care because the boys all hang around. They call her to Tan Tessie from Tennessee. Yes, Paul six fellas upon her knees hang around. When she does all the fun begin, they play tennis on a double chin. Tessie never stopped performing. An irreplaceable Welsh star of the 20th century, when she died at her home in Florida at the age of 82, a unique style of popular entertainment died with her. What she would like to have been remembered for was for um, um, happy, jolly, pleasant embracing of others. They call it here, 